some time ago. I introduced you to the eight principles of life that I learned from Cogitality and the remarkable book You the Source. This is the first part of a whole series of books. Today we will check whether we have realized them and have understood the eight principle of Hermes correctly. And in the show we will try to negotiate them and tell them once again for all those who did not understand them and for ourselves. Welcome to the new episode of You Are One. It's a great pleasure, Evo, again. Thanks for being here. Hello. Hello, everyone. When we did the episodes about the principles, you weren't involved then but people reacted in a very surprising way to me. I was very happy too. However, there were many questions left. Mainly, they were related to some of the words in the principles themselves, but also in general. Is there such a principle that is first? Or does it not matter at all where we start from? All principles are connected. And it doesn't matter where we start from, they are one complete cycle for the development of each element in all that is. From this point of view and such considerations, there is no first principle, no second, no third, i.e. there is no arrangement. They themselves are connected. If we start from one principle, we go to the next, etc. But at the same time, it is good for us because of our own logic, because of our own filtration to arrange them in some way and in this way to have a logical sequence in which to build in our head connections through which we understand what it is about and what are the step-by-step -step steps in our development. Okay, quite simple. What are these connections? If we start from the first principle, Quite simply, let's say the first principle, all is mind, the world is mental. It coincides, say, with one of the laws of existence. Sorry to interrupt you, but because we did episodes about the laws, many people would be confused. In the laws of existence, the third law is all is mind, the world is mental, and in the first principles, it is the same way. So here the law of existence itself says that if we are not energy and we are not mental, there is no way we can exist. But at the same time, with the principle of development in the first place, we put exactly this principle. From the point of view that if we somehow focus on matter and not to the energy potential that we are, we automatically confuse the point of view. When we talk about development principles, the idea is not to look at our limited perspective from the point of view of the limitation itself. On the I, but to look for options for a global view of everything that is. We talked about the need to collect the pieces of the puzzle to see the whole picture. When we look at this overall picture, we also have a view on the steps of success of our own development. In this plan, we put first again that we are only energy and mentality. We are just a thought. We are only a choice. We are just a focus. And all that we ourselves choose to be who we are. So the principle of development begins with us being just energy again. And the first principle is exactly that. All is mind, the world is mental. Second principle, what is above, so below. What does it mean? This is a subtle moment, because what is above, so is below. How does it sound at first glance? No way. And the idea here is, whatever is in the energy world, whatever principles apply in the energy world, such principles apply in the material world as well. And if we realize that the principles of existence and development are the same. At this point, realizing, let's say, the energy principles. We could use our energy possibilities through the energy that we can touch purely mentally in a purely material plan if we follow the same principles of development. Okay. 
if from what you say it sounds that the material and energy worlds complement each other. They are not something separate. They are not only for the chosen ones. They are not for people who have lived in the material all their lives and suddenly jump completely into the energetic. Is there a principle that unites the two? We ourselves are that principle. That we exist at all unites just that. And we spoke in the laws of existence that for an element to exist, it is necessary that it be made up of both polarities. One polarity if we assume that it is purely energy. Energy plan, in other words, a spiritual side. In its material part, one cannot do without the other. Think about what kind of spiritual realm we would be talking about if we didn't exist, or if we exist and are tightly bound to matter. From where then will we have intuitive messages and connection with all potential? And can matter be built if there is no energy potential that builds matter itself? And ultimately, the unifying unit, I, individuality, the individual limitation unique in itself. If it is not there and it does not make choices, will it be able to create the manifestations that are ourselves through the energy potential? which are in the material world, and the Holy Trinity is here again at the practice. In cogitality theory, we call it transmutation, UPGR, United Personal Global Responsibility. This is the general laws by which we exist. I'm just stopping you here. UPGR, it sounds a bit complicated. United Personal Global Responsibility. Let's just throw it in as a term. For most people, personal and responsibility sounds strange. But what does unified personal global responsibility mean? And where is the difference? Good thing you stopped me. Because to me it's clear. But to everyone else who knows what it is. We're already talking about the so-called collective unconscious here. This expression was used by Carl Jung. And we're just adding to that scheme. What does complement scheme mean? When a certain number of individuals or elements of all that is come together and they think alike in one direction, with general, let's say, actions, way of thinking, direction, desires, dreams, etc. They form a cloud of the collective thinking of all who are within that multitude. And this is called egregor. This is called egregor. And egregor itself is not a terrible thing because people are afraid of it. It is a kind of thought potential that envelops thinkers alike. I.e., we can imagine it as one cloud surrounding the entire planet Earth, a mental cloud, a thought cloud, which is the sum total of all of us who think. Including items, grains of sand, shells, grasses, absolutely everything that is. I emphasize again, all is mind, the world is mental. I.e., grass is also mental. All subjects are mental. The furniture, absolutely every element in everything that is is mental and has made his choice to be what he is. And personal global responsibility in this case is? That egregorian potential, that mental, all-encompassing variant, where each element of thought is one big aggregate, like a cloud of probabilities, that are, however, available because they are thought that way. All this potential, with its principles and laws, because within this mental potential are already forming rules of existence for the closed element itself. Likewise, we have the same principles and laws that we call character, i.e., for a person, the closed potential is called character. The idea is to understand that a totality, a set of elements, also has its own character, and in fact, this character determines some laws and principles by which this community this enclosed space exists at all. It has pros and cons, because we need two polarities to exist. And in fact, just as principles and laws exist in ourselves, and in this case, character, likewise at the egregore level, i.e. again we return to this, 
what is above, so is below. But we're not just talking about planet Earth here. The idea is to realize that we are in the solar system. Therefore, the solar system itself also has its own egregore. The solar system is involved in the Milky Way. Therefore, the entire Milky Way has an egregorian system, which in all these egregorian systems, starting with the universe, nebulae, which can include multiple galaxies, multiple stars, etc. All this forms, as it were, separate societies. And the rules of any society are built up from all the existing elements that are in that community. In fact, this is exactly what the unified personal global responsibility defines. It is therefore united because it is of all the characters of the elements that are within. Therefore, it is personal because everyone brings their personal character to the common, complete and unique to each in the general structure, global because it includes absolutely all the elements that are contained in this community and responsibility because they have the freedom to deploy, expand their thinking, to change themselves, to change the environment around them, and thus bear the responsibility, not only for this egregore that they themselves are, and for the deployment, the expansion, i.e., for the environment of this egregore. And everything is practically strung in a very strict way, and it's sorted. On the one hand, it is strict and in order but viewed from the perspective of the constraint itself, which has not yet touched the environment, on the constraint as an egregor principle. This cloud of probabilities that exists as an environment around him can look like complete chaos. And even our physicists of time, they see this entire energy world as manifest and implicit order. And is that where the ordered chaos, the term that was came from, Ordered chaos is just that. In fact, until you have recognized a cloud of probabilities for you, it is chaos. But the moment you recognize it, you see the order in which things are structured. It continues to be chaos because you continue to be limited, but at the same time, you're already an extended limit, and therefore, it's already sorted. What is above, so is below. What are the principles of interaction and looping? Let's say in the energy world, such will be in the united personal global responsibility, such will be in our personal individual responsibility. And so we are even talking about a fractal principle, the repetition of things. And this is most precisely said in the seventh principle of Hermes, genus is in everything. That's exactly what I was going to interrupt you with, that the principle is, isn't it, that genus exists on all levels, i.e., does that mean that I want to bring you down to earth, for example. If I am lazy in one aspect, does it mean I'm lazy everywhere in my life? It means that you manifest your laziness in the same way in all spheres, at all levels. Gender is in everything, i.e., if you have accepted this function laziness as your choice for research. Well, very clearly, you will manifest it on all levels, because in fact, this is your mission to explore laziness in all its parameters and in all its probabilities in the relationship between the I and the environment. The third principle, what is it then? The third principle, everything moves, trembles and vibrates. I think we can close it very easily here, even when Jesus said it in the Bible that even there they say movement and rest. Am I right? Absolutely correct. I.e. from the law of existence, we know that if we do not move, we simply do not exist. What did he want to tell us then with this exact movement? By what exactly is this third principle or something different? Apart from the third principle that we are simultaneously from the global perspective of potential at the source itself. In fact, we are always both we rule out the source and potential as such. Peace is within us, and this is written in Glagolitic. If we look at the Glagolitic, at its translation, it is a huge Bible about the creation of life and the principles of development in that life. Ije yota kako liudi mislite naj om pokoi. 
and the little you think people. It sinks and manifests itself at rest, i.e., peace is our essence. We are in Him and He is in us. I'm interrupting you here so that we have the chance to do a separate show about glagolitic. And let's leave the interest and mystery to the whole hidden reality behind the glagolitic language to people and how powerful the words, symbols, and letters that are used there really are. But that's why we'll talk after a while. Everything vibrates because everything is energy. Everything moves because otherwise it could not exist. A fourth principle is... Every manifestation is made up of two polarities, two opposites, and one overflows into the other. In fact, we have already commented on this in the laws of existence, that we cannot exist if we are not made up of polarities. And here it is appropriate to announce that this is not only valid for matter as such, it's not just plus and minus for electricity or good and bad for our way of thinking, it's on all levels. That is, the principle itself, that there are opposites and polarities for the principle, operates the principle that it is the genus of all levels. Exactly. And that is why the principles themselves flow from one to another. They explain and repeat themselves. Moreover, opposites are the same in nature. Hmm. Different in what, though? Different in degree, i.e., when shall we say one polarity will be stronger than the other? when we have given it more attention and focus. Focus, i.e., we have chosen it. When we choose, we choose a certain polarity. Will we choose the pen to be a weapon or will we choose it to be a writing tool? It depends on the meaning we will give it, on that plane of thought. Is there anything superfluous in all that is? I don't think so. Everything is in its place. Everything has its meaning and we give it meaning. By itself, each element in all that is, is what it is. And this is precisely its content. This is its purpose to exist as an element in everything that is. At the same time, however, who, how will apply this element in their interaction with him? It depends entirely on his choice. Correct. Everything flows in and out. This is the principle of rhythm. The rhythm of swinging to the right is the rhythm of swinging to the left. Everything has its ebb and flow. The rhythm is balanced. The idea here is that when there is an impulse, a focus, an act of thinking at all, we have a choice and that choice stretches space-time and realizes manifestation. This manifestation is a left and right movement around the potential from which it is created the pair of photons we were talking about, with turning left and right and stretch space-time at the same moment, at the same moment of here and now, when we have stretched a given space, time, we are looking for options for development, because if we do not develop, there will be no change. Hmm. There will be no existence. There will be no existence. And for this reason, everything flows in and out, i.e., it is right to realize that the energy we give out is in the name of our own development as individual and unique entities. It will be filled immediately. We will not disappear. We will not empty ourselves. Does this mean to rebalance the balance in nature, simply put? Exactly. And here it is appropriate to look at the details of our own development. When we expand and we become more capable, Instantly, the circumference of this sphere, of this circle, becomes larger. And actually, the circumference to diameter ratio that we said is actually work that we're going to do to the capabilities like diameter that we have is always a constant. And this is the infinite number pi, which is actually balancing the balance. Okay. In the Kaibalian, the ancient hermeticians say that they used all the principles, but especially the principle of rhythm in such a way that they were able to master it consciously to some extent, i.e., they could handle it. 
How can we consciously apply this principle in our daily lives? We are making a critical mistake. We think that when we have a certain success, immediately after it comes a failure. Hmm. That is, we are used to thinking that too much of a good thing is not a good thing. Correct. No good deed goes unpunished, etc. Why does this point of view exist? This point of view exists only if we assume that the pendulum has a center. It sits only and only in this center and it is unchangeable. What are we actually talking about? That the pendulum is swinging. When we achieve success, the pendulum should naturally swing back. But if we have achieved any success in that moment, we change our own thinking, i.e. we shift the center of our own view of a situation, event or element of all that is. And the moment we shift the center of the pendulum to our current success, it turns out that success is upon us again and we start again. And strengthen ourselves towards success and then we change the point of view again. And we're on our way to success again. And for this reason, in the laws of existence, if you remember, I said that success is permanent because we are constantly walking the steps of success and failure is only one. When we refuse to walk the path we have chosen. As long as we go, failure does not exist. As long as we go, we are on the steps of success. The sixth principle states, Every cause has an effect and every effect has a cause. The idea here is to exclude time. Time as such does not exist in the source. Why does he say it that way? As far as you remember. Just to clarify, do we exclude time as linear or? Like linear as linear development time. Because we ourselves in the source are always here and now, if you remember, their time flowed with infinite speed. In this situation, each cause appeared simultaneously with the effect, and the effect was the root cause of the cause of this effect. Which is first then, the chicken or the egg? In fact, the choice. Which choice? Ours. From it follows the development of potential. The potential, the pair of photons. They have direction because we have made a choice. This direction determines the DNA, determines our existence, which existence vibrates and vibrates again where in the potential and creates ourselves. This process is endless. And so the first law of existence states, you exist and this is immutable as a fact because this endless process is not interrupted. When is the start? And here. Is there actually a beginning? What if everything is here and now? When is the start? And when is the end? And will there be an end? And there never was in that plane of thought. Then we come to the so-called seventh principle, which reads, genus is in everything. And we have already commented on it. The important thing here is to realize that since we have polarities, everything is made of polarities, everything is dual. This dual world always exists. There is no only good or only bad. There is no such thing as being 100% positive or 100% negative, etc. And then we come to the eighth principle. I just want to say, before we continue to the eighth principle, to say why this principle has remained unknown, why can't you get to it easily? And I dare say that especially in Bulgaria, even on YouTube, this was not commented on. The Eighth Principle is a special principle. It is a principle that you have to experience first and then you begin to realize it. In fact, don't you always experience it? You're always experiencing it and that's exactly why while you're in the quagmire of your own choices, you have no way of knowing that you're following the Eighth Principle, to experience it consciously, to experience it in the way that you yourself make choices based on your conscious experience, and this can only happen if you have really realized that everything is here and now. What is the Eighth Principle then? The Eighth Principle is that 
everything manifests simultaneously with its polarity, i.e. it cannot exist if it does not contain within itself both polarities. i.e. we automatically with all our goodness and light have equal amounts of badness and... Fauli. Exactly. And now here I aspire to whatever i.e. the pursuit of any manifestation. It manifests itself simultaneously with its opposite, but simultaneously with the opposite of aspiration. i.e. if we have a desire to manifest anything, the doubt immediately arises whether to change it. And here comes René Descartes, cogito ergo sum, I doubt, therefore I think, therefore I am. The idea is that we accept both polarities, we recognize them with equal force, and only then we are aware that we exist, thanks precisely to these two polarities. Then we can make informed choices, when to apply our goodness or our badness depending on the situation or events which are around us, which we ourselves have chosen to experience. Otherwise, can we then say that we are just going with the flow, because we have not realized that we can handle both the plus and the minus, and that precisely in a conscious way? Exactly. And now here I aspire to whatever I e the pursuit of any manifestation. It manifests itself simultaneously with its opposite, but simultaneously with the opposite of aspiration. We don't wander, and we recognize only one polarity, and from that moment on, we want to be perfect, and we exclude that half in which we are not perfect. In this plan, don't we become more closed while at the same time? More limited. Yes, but at the same time, what we are looking for and think we will find outside was exactly in that half that we left some time ago. Yes, for us, this half that we have left, the other polarity is uh, something unknown, where our success may be right there. And we looking in the other, Wandering in the other, we may never reach it, and most likely we will not get there, because success is only if we recognize both polarities of our own existence. And then, here comes the sequel to the eighth principle, and only the focus determines the character of the result. Once we know both polarities, we choose what to experience in that focus. This choice we make defines, for us, a cloud of probabilities as to the character we can experience. But what exactly we experience depends on our own actions. That is, here it is very important not to confuse that the focus does not determine the result itself. It never defined it. By character we mean a full field of possibilities. And that is that sometimes we get another result that is slightly different than desired, but similar. Let's say I wanted a black car, I got a green on, but it's a car after all. After all, the point is to realize that it's the content that matters. In fact, we get the content as the result, and the form doesn't matter at all. I.e. We should not be upset and angry that we have not received the specific form, but rather we should be grateful that we have received the content. It is. And in fact, for this reason, the law is also unknown. Because we assume that if our wish was to get a black car, we got a green one. We think the law is not working. Yes, and we blame the law and we blame the law. And in this plan, the law becomes unknown. And now we summarize. The aspiration to whatever manifests simultaneously with its polarity of the same that whatever, to the same element and to the same aspiration, and only our focus. The choices we make are determined in the here and now. It defines the character of the result, but not the result itself. If there is no focus, everything remains possible. If there is no focus, the finality of this law is correct. Everything remains a possibility, because when we do not make a choice, can we exist? No. And if we don't exist, where are we? In the potential that knows everything, 
but can experience nothing. We are the ones who experience it. We are the complement of that potential. We are the complement of this potential through the choices we make in the simultaneity of the here and now. Observing the general principles and rules of our own choices. And those are the eight principles. Just to add a little more information, when were they first known to mankind? The very principles were released 40,000 years ago. But 27,000 years ago, they found ground, so to speak, in a larger part of the population and imposed themselves as an idea, without the eighth principle itself. Yes. This eighth principle, because it remains misunderstood. On and on for years it has been repeated, and at the present it is practiced by all without being consciously accepted by all. Thanks for helping us adopt it. I believe, I am convinced that after our broadcast, everyone will realize that the world is made up of polarities which, however, are not good and bad. Both polarities are equally good, and then they themselves will understand that simply what? We have already experienced as a polarity is familiar and what we are left to experience as another polarity is unknown. Known plus unknown makes I am. It makes my existence. It makes the understanding, the awareness that I am the way, the source and life itself, that I am both the work and the opportunities, that I am all that is, but I have chosen and focused right now to be Ivomir. I think we couldn't have ended it in a better way. Thank you to everyone who follows and watches the shows. Leave below under the video your questions about the following topics. Thank you for being with us. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the videos every week. And don't forget the most important motto that is the whole project, which at first glance may seem very literal and very cliched, but it really contains everything that it is. And that is, you, you are, are one. one. Thank you. Thank you too.